Hi y'all, this is Becky Racer. I'm with uh, Becky's Junk Journals on YouTube and on Instagram. And today I'm gonna tell you um, how I make these glassine envelopes and pockets. Now I have a huge stack of glassine. You see it right there? That is from a roll that uh, I used to use glassine to cover my paintings. I used to make mixed media paintings on canvas and I used the glassine to cover the paintings while they were in storage to protect them. <clears throat> and I have a ton of it and this is just part of it, of my huge stash that I have. And um, I'm trying to figure out ways to use the uh, glassine up and um, Uh, so, I know about pockets, and I know about um, making uh, envelopes, but um, I don't know very much about how to use glassine as a decorative element, and um, uh, so, anyway, I can't think of any other way to use glassine but in the journals uh, that I'm making right now other than making bags and, and pockets and um, uh, uh, well, I can't think today. Ah! <laughs> uh, envelopes is what I'm trying to say. Anyway, I'm gonna show you a few examples um, and then I'm gonna show you how, um, how I made the different ones. And I'm not gonna actually do much uh, um, cutting and pasting today because I have shaky hands and so, and today they are shakier than usual so <laughs> uh, um, I'll try to minimize it as best I can but as I get older it just gets worse um, but anyway there's different ways that I make them and there's different types of folds that you can make the first thing you do <clears throat> is you um, cut your paper uh, down to size and there's two sizes that I use either a square shape to make envelopes if you have a square shape uh, Which I don't have any cut out ready to go right now naturally uh, Then there's the long strips um, like Like this one was a long strip that I cut down Now I'm going to show you some examples. This one's going to be the method where I fold it in the, in the back, in the back center, so it just has one seam in the back. This is a really popular way um, to make them. I can't see it very well. Um, but first of all, you have your long strip, and then you fold it in like that to make your width and this will be your top and then at the bottom you fold up about half an inch um, at the bottom and then you're going to have it'll be two uh, layers right here and what I do is I open it back out and I cut off the the little section down here where there's, um, uh, to make a flap is what I'm, so I just cut off each side of the flap and that makes it, when you fold it up, it makes it easier and it doesn't show that it's two layers and it, it gives a neater appearance. This is uh, probably one of the easiest and neatest ways to make a pocket and you'll see lots of variations of this. You know, you can use any size of strip. I'm using scraps. Um, so, um, I use, use whatever I have, like this is, uh, how it, how it looks when I first cut it. And you notice that it's, since it's all used, it's going to have wrinkles and stuff on it. Well, I don't worry about that. This one, I fold it up where I have a flap at the top. When I get done with this, I can either fold it down like that for a flap, or I can use it as a backing for a pocket to go in that way. And all it is, 
is a strip of paper folded in half to whatever length you want, either with a flap, without a flap, like this one's not going to have a flap at the top, uh, or you can use the, make this flap as like a backing for when you glue it onto a, a page. And um, that's the two ways that I cut them, either in strips or in folded over. And just depending on how you do your pockets um, is how you want to do it. Okay, I'm going to show you some examples of how they look when they're made up. And then I'm going to tell you about how I did these different uh, methods of coloring the glassine. Because that was something that I had to teach myself. Now, my favorite way to do uh, pockets is this one. This is my favorite one. I love this so much. And all it is is a piece that's folded in half like that. That's simple. Just a piece of glassine folded in half. Then a thin strip of glue, and I use art glitter glue because in this tiny metal tip, I can just run a thin line down each side, and that glues it together. And this one is tissue paper covered, and I made um, some uh, tags to go in there, journaling cards to go in there specific for this one because I like the way that it looked peeking out. This one is just one of my simple, easy uh, journaling papers um, that I make. That's just a paper folded in half, rounded the corners, inked around the edges, inked the whole thing on the inside with uh, your knob inker, and um, then stamped on it. And that gives a nice big journaling spot for people who like to write in their journals. Uh, if I wanted to, I could go ahead and decorate this big one up. Uh, but for my purposes here today, and I don't know what journal this one's going to go in or whether I'm going to give this away or sell them or what I'm going to do with them. But uh, this is an example of just the simple fold in half and glue the edges. And I'll tell you how I got this tissue paper on there and uh, I learned how to do it through trial and error. So <laughs> um, I'll tell you about that. First, let me show you some more examples. Here's another example of the bunny. I just love It's a napkin that I used. And um, it's just another one where I folded the glassine in half and glued the two edges and made a pocket. And then I just put some lace at the top, made myself a journaling card to go in there. And I made it tall enough so it would peek out like that. The little bunny would have some flowers coming out the top. So I'm working in pinks uh, because... Um, the journals that I'm working on right now have a lot of pinks, but you could do these in neutral colors if you like the antique vintage look. Um, you could use your um, vintage photo for the ink instead of this pink. This pink color I'm using is called Picked Raspberry Distress Ink by Tim Holtz. And um, I'm using it a lot. In fact, I'm going to have to re-ink my pad because uh, the last two journals I've made have been pink and a lot of pink in them. So, um, anyway, okay. These are all the tissue method ones because that was, it turned out that that was my favorite one. Let me show you another one. This is one that is just a fold over flap and I made a little catch there with a piece of cardstock and the flower, uh, fabric flower glued on there. So it would catch catch it, but you could do the circles with the string ties. Oh, I'm gonna sneeze. <coughs> sorry, my allergies are killing me today. I'm so sorry. Uh, it's a it's an allergy season for me, and then I just made a little plain journaling card to go inside of it, and I think this is about. 
four inches wide. That's probably four inches wide. <clears throat> I'm sorry for sneezing on you. And this is just tissue paper covered. And since there was no specific design that I wanted to be upright, I covered the whole um, piece of glassine with it. Uh, so it'd be front and back. I always like to finish off the backs of my pockets and envelopes because I never know how I'm going to use them um, in my uh, journal. So or whether I'm going to send it as Happy Meal or whatever I'm going to do with it. But I thought that was just so stinking cute. Here's a variation of that without the flap. And uh, see, it, this is the fold over method. There's a seam in the back and a fold up at the top. And um, just a simple glassine pocket, tissue paper covering the whole thing since there was not a specific. And then I just filled it with some Monopoly money and a uh, Monopoly card and a flower cut out and a little journaling card. And I thought that was just sweet. Now, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to use this in my um, series of little golden books I'm going to be doing here. And so I'm buying colors and looking at things that I can make to go in my little golden book because I have 14 little golden books that I'm going to be working on here after I finish my current journal. Um, here's another example of uh, just plain folded up and, and no seam in the back. The seams are on the sides. It's glued on the sides and then inked around the edges. Tissue paper on the front only. And that's because I wanted this flower to be upright. And if I had done it the whole piece, my, the, when I turned it on the back, my flower would be upside down. So <laughs> I uh, did it like that. I inked it up a little bit with the uh, picked raspberry color and put made some little journaling cards. I think this one is uh, one another one of my um, easy uh journaling spots that I make. Just uh, paper that's been inked and uh, rounded the corners. So those are super easy to make and I have a tutorial on making easy uh, ephemera uh, if you'd like to check it out. And here's another example. This is an envelope. All I did was just leave the flap long so I could fold it down and it's just a long piece that's been folded up with a flap left and I glued the front I glued the um, tissue paper on there uh, using my glue stick only I did not use wet glue because it makes it bubble up and um, it doesn't stick very well and it tears uh, when you try to put it on there so I use Elmer's extreme glue stick is what I use to uh, put the tissue paper down. I just ink, just um, glue up on there real thick and then lay it down on top of it and then cut a uh, trim around the edges to finish it off. And I do that before I glue the sides um, so I can trim the edges neatly before I glue the sides. Uh, I also found that uh, it's hard to glue to cut that tissue paper uh, straight on the edges, um, and uh, so I I just uh, uh, sometimes you if it, if it uh, you just can't get it right um, you can uh, cut trim the whole thing uh, down um, straight uh, and that's how you get it even on the edges. All I did with this one, I didn't uh, decorate the top flap. I just left it transparent like it is and put a little trim on the edges. So this is a lot easier than trying to buy a template online uh, and trace it out and cut it out and do all that. And I can't do that because I have arthritic hands and, and uh, so it's hard for me to use the scissors um, these days. So. Uh, also, I you know, <laughs> I have a hard time cutting a straight line. This glassine is really slippery, 
uh, you don't have to use glassine. You can you can use any kind of paper, but if you like the transparent look, you can also um, uh, use uh, deli paper or uh, wrapping paper or um, let's see what other kinds that I have. Um, I didn't write down my different types of paper. What do you know? Okay, well, there's different types of paper. You can buy those deli sheets that are 12 by 12 that go in your sandwiches at delis. Um, you can buy those at Dollar Tree for a dollar a package of like 500 of them. Uh, but deli sheets uh, can be used. Wax paper can be used. Uh, wax, wrapping paper that's that's got kind of a slick front to it. Now that won't be transparent, but uh, it can be used. The, it's tricky to work with this uh, wax paper or glassine because when you cut it, things slide around and it's hard to get a straight line. But um, I found that once I uh, got the um, just uh, a size that's that I want to use that's sort of straight, <laughs> I can color it and uh, or I can put the tissue paper on it, and then it's a lot easier to use. Now I'm going to tell you about how coloring. Now I call this method, this is an example of an envelope, and I started this off with a square, and all it is is a square folded to the center on all four corners, and then you um, cut off a little V-shape in each corner, and um, then fold it up. Then I made a little <clears throat> pocket. Now I'm going to talk to you about um, how I colored this glassine paper like this. Um, this is what I call the cracked ice method of um, coloring the glassine paper. Now you could do this with uh, vintage photo and uh, if you like the vintage look um, or any other of the brown inks or even black ink. Um, but I use these colors because this is my favorite color and this is the color I'm using in the current book. So <laughs> this one it will probably go in my current journal I'm working on. But all this is is um, a piece of glassine paper that's been wadded up into a ball, real tight, and then opened up. Open up flat, and then I get the um, color of choice that I'm going to use, and uh, I think I'll use pink since I'm working in a pink journal. This pad's almost empty, but all I do is take the whole ink pad and rub it on there like that. And the more ink you put on there, the thicker it gets. And that's what it looks like. Now, um, I do this before I glue anything. And I also let it dry because because this is waxy, sort of, it takes a while for this ink to dry. Um, so I give it about, um, oh, uh, 10 minutes or something before I actually start cutting on it and using it. Also, if, you, if it gets wet, the ink will run. It uh, reactivates. So the Tim Holtz Distressed Inks are not permanent inks. They are water activated. So um, you don't want to get it wet. Um, okay. Um, this is one way that I color the paper, and um, that was the cracked ice method, and then these envelopes I made with the cracked ice method were simply folded in half and glued on the edges, and then put some trim at the top. This one was the, the envelope one that I made with a square. So I think it's quite striking. Uh, I haven't seen anybody else do that, so I hope you get some good ideas from that. Um, I showed you the fold-up shapes. This is how it looks with just a plain 
piece of paper to scrap, fold up, and fold the flap over, and then I glue these two edges. And I have found with this glassine that you don't really notice the edges that have been glued, and if you're gonna ink the edges anyway, it really um, doesn't make a difference, and you don't have to go to all the trouble of cutting out uh, fancy pockets. Uh, with a tutorial, I mean with a, um, a template or tracing around and doing all that stuff, I, I just can't do it. Uh, here's another example of how I inked the pockets. This is a, this is one I inked with, um, uh, this is called Victorian Velvet, this color here. It's a Tim Holtz Victorian Velvet, and it's just another envelope that I made. You can see it's not cut straight here, but I'll worry about that when I finish it off and I'll trim. When I ink it, I'll trim it up straight and make sure the pocket's cut straight. But first thing I wanted to do was ink, and I only inked one side. You don't need to ink the inside. But after this dries, it gives it um, sort of a tackier um, feel to it. So it will... Um, uh, be easier to handle because this stuff when that when it rubs together it slips around all over the place um, Here's another method that I use um, for uh, Coloring these things and this is just this one's a little bit further along. It's just a long strip of glassine that I had and um, before I um, cut it. I folded it up to see where I wanted. I wanted a back flap uh, to show and for my pocket and I'll, I'll glue this two sides. But before I did anything, I inked uh, with uh, just with my um, ink and knob, <laughs> ink putter on her. I don't know what you call these things. Ink pad rubber on her. <laughs> <laughs> and my and I use pickled raspberry that's almost run out and I just lightly did it on the back with the swirl motion then I flipped it over and did what's going to be the top that's going to show in a in a, a swirly motion and that's how it came out and um, then I just glued the washi tape at the tops and then here uh, to give it some stability uh, and also give it a little bit of decoration and that pocket will be considered done um, I'm I don't haven't decided whether I'll do anything else. I'll probably let the the items that are going to go inside of the pocket um, Be the decoration and let this stand on alone um, So that's another way you can do it. You can rub it on with your ink knob or you can wrinkle it up and make the cracked ice look I, um, here's another one that I did. This is, this is what I did with, um, without wrinkling it up. This is what it looks like. All I did was take my ink pad and rub it on, uh, my ink pad. And this is, um, tumbled glass is the ink that I used on this one. And, uh, because the paper is kind of bubbly, wrinkly up, it doesn't catch every bit of it. And so, um, um, so this is how it came out. And I like this too, uh, but it does, there's so much ink on it, it does take a long time to dry. Um, then I folded the um, papers to the center and fold the bottom up about a half an inch and cut off the top, I mean the bottom of the flap, so it would fold up easily. Um, you just cut off the section, and super simple. Not, no template needed, just do it. And that is the size of a coin envelope. I could have made it uh, with a flap to come over and um, come down and and and, you, and made it look exactly like a coin envelope but uh, this is just a pocket and I'm going to show you how these look in my book um, this is 
the current journal I'm working on, it's already a gator mouth. <laughs> Life is a journey, and it's a gator mouth book um, that I'm going to have a hard time closing. And I'm not done yet. I'm still working on the uh, last few pages. but And I'll show you um, a flip through of this journal probably next week. But here's an example of what the... Um, tissue paper covered looks like in my journal. Um, this um, paper back here is Kool-Aid dyed paper with the pink lemonade as I think what it was. And then I just did the simple, well this is the fold in the back, the seam in the back method. So the edges I didn't have to glue. And I didn't ink the edges on this one um, because on this particular page, I just wanted to have um, something that wouldn't take away too much from the paper flower I made on this side. And I do have a tutorial on how to make these flowers. Okay. Um, I think I've showed you everything I need to show you about these things, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Please uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it and it was helpful, and I'll see you again soon, I hope. Bye-bye.